Good afternoon, and welcome to today's episode of Messages for the Masculine to Inspire Your Feminine Hearts. This is episode number 533. The topic today is you're right, and yet so wrong. <laughs> Before I jump into the topic and uh, give you all the details on that, let me introduce myself. My name is Barry Selby. I'm a best-selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert, and help strong, successful women I, I help strong, successful women create and find balance in love, life, and business. I'm also a passionate champion for the divine feminine, which leads to these talks that I've done for almost two years now, which is Messages from the Masculine to Inspire the Feminine Heart. That's the title, anyway. And the topics vary in range and topic areas, and usually around relationships, romance, and love. But today, a little different, although it's going to be inclusive, too, because so many people don't get this point. So there is actually an ulterior motive to my topic today, which, again... And again, this is episode 533, and the topic today is You're Right and Yet So Wrong. Um, I'm also doing this a bit early, by the way, in case you're wondering why this is not 5 p.m. Pacific time. It's an hour earlier because I actually have plans with a friend for, well, friends rather, we have a barbecue tonight. It's the last one probably of the year, so we're going to grab a chance to do it tonight. That means I've got to head it early, so getting this done beforehand because I want to keep my commitment to you and to myself to do this every day. This topic actually was inspired by a, a chance meeting with a friend I haven't seen in 15 years at least. Um, Trader Joe's just, ch just chatting away and it just hit me to talk about this because it was a realization that I've, I've I, I was just talking and just like, oh, hang on a second. Yeah, of course. And this is the fact that we don't know what we're talking about. <laughs> this, is, this, is not, this is actually, not, neither one of us were saying this, but we were just aware of some mutual friends with that, or to say friends we both know differently from each other where we got clear they don't know what they're talking about. So I'm, I'm, I'd, I'd rather than saying you don't know what you're talking about, I was going to say you're right and so wrong to explain the conundrum we face in, in conversation. So um, this is, this is going to be hopefully entertaining, um, perhaps inspiring, and certainly educational. So let's jump in, shall we? Um, <laughs> yeah, you don't know what you're talking about. That's kind of the problem, is that we have a bad habit of using the language in a way that is um, like shooting ourselves in the foot. So let me use an example of that. When you hear somebody, maybe not you, but maybe somebody you know, saying how they can't understand something, that is their truth. They're, they're right about it, but they're also so wrong because what they're doing is affirming something they don't want. And I'm going to talk this in a much broader spectrum in a moment, but I'll use this simple illustration, a very singular illustration to really give you a um, insight that will maybe give you some thoughts about how you can maybe change the way you language your own life. Yes, this could be big stuff, but let me start small. So, somebody says, I can't understand this. What they're, actually, what they're actually saying is that they're not allowing themselves to understand something, so they're closing the door to it. So they're being wrong by denying the possibility, and they're right because they can't understand it. And this simple little I would say a formula, equation, applies to every communication you have in life. Yes, every single one. And it's not just the ones you have out there, it's the, one you have in, the ones you have inside as well. So I'm going to throw you some examples in, in front of you, but I'm really going to give you some homework on this. Yes, you're going to get homework, which happens quite often in my broadcasts. So let me just say a couple of things about how I would suggest you reframe and reword what she said. Or he said, I, this was non-generic, I mean, it was non-gender specific. But basically, that what they said was, I can't understand this. What would be more accurate to say is, I don't understand this. But because the person defaulted, because it's a default, to use the word, oh, I can't get, I can't understand this. Rather than saying, I don't understand this, it changes the whole possibility. Because what, she's, what, what they're really saying, again, I keep saying she, but it wasn't my friend. It was a, a hypothetical person, so they. <laughs> What they actually, the reality was, is they don't understand what's going on, but they cut it off by saying, I can't. Now, this is one of those words, can't, which goes in the same bucket of annoyances as the word try, the word but, the word should, the words have to, because all of those words have a bad habit of limiting your ability to have what you want. And so if you want to know what you if you want to get what you want, listen up because this will help you along that path in a very simple but powerful way. So the words we use. We are so caught up in the framing of language, it gets extreme. And that's what it really is in a way. It's moving out of the place of just being 
simple and flow and be in the, in the flow of the way life works, we've got to take positions. And I'm not saying it's for everybody, but it's an innate egoic response that does that. So when you say, I can't do something, you're making a stand for you can't have something, which seems really limiting. And so this thing about being, being right but also being wrong is because you are stating the truth of what you think is real, and you are right because you're creating that reality. But you're not getting what you want, so you're actually being wrong about it. So I'll give an illustration that might be a bit more profound. Um, well, let me play. Well, actually, before that, let me play some other words in this frame because I said about several words besides can't, like try, should, have to, but as well. These words, when you say but in a frame in a conversation, B U T, not B U T T, just to be clear, because <laughs> some of you are thinking, no, you're not. Okay. Um, so when you say, I'd love to help you, but I can't. Or, I, actually, no, let me take kind out of that because I already covered that one. Let me help you, but I'm not able to, or I'm not willing to, whatever that is. The word but is an eraser. Yes, the word but is an eraser in, in um, it NLP, but it's certainly in language and terminology. The word but erases everything that came before it. So if you say, I'd love to do this, 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 and this, but I'm doing this instead, you're saying what you're saying is the negative of what came before that. So it's a very limiting word to use. So a lot of times what I've been trained, I've been trained to do this, I'm helping other people with this. So the same but, say the word and. So back to what I said as the illustration, I'd love to help you and I've got other plans, still maintains the love you have for what they would, what they, what help they would love from you. See, the thing about it is when you say but, it's like a punch in the face energetically. It's like saying, I love you, but I want something else versus saying, I love you and I'm doing something else. See the difference in energetics? So that's another powerful shift of language you can do. So first of all is take the word can't out and be more clear about saying either don't or won't is even more powerful because then it's a will, not a not a have to. You can be more free in that. I'll get to have to in a moment. Then try, sorry, but is another one. Try, let me do try first, then we'll do have to. Try is this wonderful word which taking out of the game of football where you, or where you do a try to you know kick the ball, in language, try is an impossibility which is that it's possible to be trying, but it's impossible to get anywhere. So if you said to somebody, if you said, you know, um, see, how, this is how I say it. If you have a gift for somebody, or wait, let me, a bit, let me back up a second. The energy of try is to effort towards something without result. That's a pretty good definition. Try is not about getting something. Either you get it or you don't. But if you try to get it, you never get there. It's an impossibility because try is a limiting frame that keeps you contained. So if, for example, if I was offering you, and this is actually from a seminar I took years ago, so remember this little flashback. If I offered you a pen and I said try to take the pen, you would never take it out of my hand because if you did take it out of my hand, you would have succeeded and you would have taken the pen. But if you're trying, you never get there. So when you say in your life to somebody else that you're trying to do something, know that what you're saying is, no, I'm not going to do it. If that's the case, be honest. Using that word try is extremely um, insidious because what it really means is you're not going to do something. But when you change it so I'm not going to and say you're not going to do it, you're more honest, more clean, and more truthful. So that's the third one. Fourth one is have to, because I mentioned that earlier too. We carry a lot of weight on our shoulders, it seems, in life, where we tell each other we have to do something or we have to go somewhere else or we have to go to the DMV or we have to go this. The truth is you don't have to do any of that. This have to framing the have to word is such a, again, another limiting word. I mean, these are part, this is this whole spectrum of these limiting ways we talk to ourselves, which are we're declaring our truth inaccurately and then not getting what we want. So it's a yes, you're true, and no, you're not getting what you want, so you're not telling the truth. So it's this little nuance here. So I want to show you get the language of this, because the truth in this conversation is there are words we use in our language that are guaranteed to limit our ability to have what we want. And as you know, in my work with my clients is to help you get what you want. So a lot of my languaging, so a lot of my coaching rather, is sometimes relanguaging how we talk about things. So using the words try, have to, should, can't. Did I miss one? I missed one. One is in there somewhere. I'll get back to it. I'm going to be basically be challenging for you because you are, well, let me put it this way. In one of, my, one of the philosophers I studied, we talk about how your word is law, meaning that when you state something, you're putting into reality what you've said. So if you say things that are limiting, negative, impossible, that's the reality you're creating for yourself. If you want to have what you want, then affirm what you want. So instead of saying you don't want this, you say, well, you do want this. 
So you put the energy towards where you want to go versus away from something you don't. This is true in relationships, true in money, true in health, true in every area of life. So watch what you say in your languaging because reality of life is created from what you say. The power of our words, and this is the thing I want to give the other level to, is not just external, it's internal. So even if you're not saying it out loud, just be aware of what you say to yourself internally because what you say is law in here as well. So if you say to yourself, I'd love to go out with them, but I can't see myself doing it. Well, you're saying no. So what you said about loving to go out with them, not true, because you said I can't, so you've closed off the door. So, and I'm saying this to myself because I had some of those go through my head the last few days, so I'm just re-wording re some things I've said to myself to reframe and re-language so I want to go the direction I'll go into versus denying something I didn't realize I was denying. So this is my own teaching I'm giving you from my own experience from after 30 years of doing this. I'm still learning how to do this better. So... The key thing is to watch your, is to watch your language. <laughs> I don't mean in the sense of not swearing. I mean watch the words you use because nine times out of ten, we forget or we are, we um, don't hear what we're saying out loud, and we say things that limit us. So I do invite you to watch what you say. Do you start framing and affirming what you want the right way? And the homework I mentioned at the beginning is going to be this. I'm making this quick because I have to head out shortly, and that's why I'm doing my broadcast early. So I've got I've got playtime tonight. Um, your homework is to con watch your language the best you can, both what you say out loud, what you write on the computer, if you're on you know, Facebook or emails, whatever it is, and what you think to yourself. Yes, all three areas. Spending the time to look into what you say and be aware of what you say will give you a massive insight to see where you're on course and off course. Because when you get your words and see, oh, I'm saying that now, and you can say, you know what, I want to shift that over here to where I want to go. And that simple act could change your life. You're welcome. Um, this, is, this is one of these subtle things, but it's so powerful because we don't always remember what we're saying. And when you start looking into the languaging of can't, try, should, have to, and can't, <laughs> that was the word, then you can change everything. So... These are several, there's actually a lot more words out there. I mean, NLP, we talk about other things, including global deletions, where you say things will never happen, where it might actually happen. So I'm not going to give you all of them, but this is just planting a seed to get you started. So watch your words and notice where you're saying things that may in fact not be true. Because when you say you can't, ask yourself, is that really true or am I just saying that? If you're rather saying you'd rather not, that's the truth, so speak it. If you're saying that I try, you know, I try to be there, but I can't, that's a double whammy. <laughs> so watch your language. So my invitation to you, my homework to you, is to actually spend the time to just be an observer of your own words. Again, written, spoken, internal. Those three areas. And notice what you do to stay on course and what takes you off course. Because the truth is your wording will actually be a guide, a signpost and guidelines to where you want to go in your life. So it's not just about affirming everything. It's about conscious languaging what you're saying. So that's your homework. Um, if you want to talk about it, if you want to talk about that in further in conversation with me, I'll put the link to my um, free discovery session in the, in the comments. And if you have any questions about this broadcast, please put them below in the comments, and I will talk, I will respond after I sign off. Um, this is a Facebook Live that I do every day, number five hundred thirty-three today. Um, every day is my commitment, so I'll be one tomorrow. We'll do five thirty-four. Don't know the topic yet. I'll see what comes up. But if you haven't watched my broadcast before, they're on Facebook Live first, then onto YouTube, and then onto my podcast. So I'll give you the links now so you notify me. So if you want to watch my, all my Facebook Lives, it's easy to find them on my business page, which is barryselby.author, because they're, that's the main thing I post on that page. My personal page is a lot more stuff, so it's harder to find them. Secondly, on YouTube, I have, I have a channel on YouTube, which is under the name Barry Selby, which is all my social media. So please subscribe to my YouTube channel. And there's a playlist on there called Messages from the Masculine, which is where all these live. And third, on my podcast, which is on iTunes, called Messages from the Masculine. Please subscribe to that as well if you like. And you can download the audios, listen to them when you're driving, riding, working out, whatever you're doing, we you can't watch your phone. So with that, I appreciate you watching. Take this to heart. It can change your life simply and effectively. Whether you're looking for a new career, whether you're looking for a new relationship, whether you're in a relationship, in a career, any area of life where you find yourself not getting what you want, check your language first. It might simply be the way you're framing what you want. And that might just change your life. Appreciate you watching. I'll see you again tomorrow. Take care.